Hello and welcome to another booktube video from me Lauren from Lauren and the Books. How are you all? Are you all enjoying yourselves today? Today is my June at the moment video. So at the moment is something that I started a few months ago following Anthony Andrews tag video um, where I talk about the things that I've most recently watched read, listen to, etc, etc. And I just felt like it's a really good way to check in um, with things that I've been consuming in the month that aren't necessarily a favourite of mine because sometimes things don't appear, I don't talk about things because um, they're not a favourite of mine. So I just thought this was a really nice thing to do. I keep doing this little spiel at the beginning of it, of these at the moment videos. That might be the last spiel. I think from now on I'm just going to go straight in, launch straight in. Just like I'm about to launch straight into the, my favourite song at the moment. Um, at the moment, my favourite song is a song that's in the charts at the moment. <laughs> this never happens. It's 2002 by Anne-Marie. Um, this is just a really fun song um, which samples lyrics and uh, from songs that were out from my youth. <laughs> um, so the, 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 the chorus um, samples songs like um, Britney Spears, Oops I Did It Again, uh, 99 Problems by Jay-Z and I just really like it. David heard it for the first time the other day, it was on the radio and I said, oh I really like this song um, and he's since added it to his Spotify and yeah, it's just it just feels like a really summery um, tune and tune and also it just um, gives me quite nostalgic feelings about the songs I used to listen to when I was younger. So that is the song that I've been listening to. I think that is, I mean, I I say I think that is definitely the first time I've mentioned a song that's actually been in the charts at the moment so well done me. Uh, the next um, section is what film, what is the last film that I watched. David and I really haven't watched many films this month, we've watched, I think we just watched the one film. It might not even be this month, I might have watched it last month. Um, and the reasons for that are about to become very clear. Um, but the last film that I watched was um, Bridget Jones's Diary, The Edge of Reason, which is the second Bridget Jones. Um, it's not as good as the first, no way. It's not as good as the third, no way. But it is Bridget Jones and um, I feel like Hugh Grant does a great delivery of Daniel Cleaver in there. Um, and David had never seen it before. Um, and he enjoyed it. There's a few bits in there. There's a few like one-liners that really got us <laughs> laughing. For instance, I can't remember what bit. Oh, when Bridget's at um, her production offices for the TV company she works for, and she comes up with this absolutely ludicrous idea. She's like, "Oh, what do you want me to do? Um, get my t-shirt all wet and like, just some like really sexist idea?" And her boss is like, "No, of course not. Write that down." Yeah. <laughs> and it just really tickled us. I think probably you had to be there. Um, but that's the only film that we've watched so far this um, this month. I gave it two stars. It's fine. It's just nowhere near on par with um, the first Bridget Jones or even Bridget Jones's baby. Um, the reason we haven't been watching any TV is because the TV that we've been... Uh, the reason we haven't been watching any films is because the TV at the moment is... Yes! Love Island's back! Love Island is back. Um, I loved Love Island last year. It's a bit of a shame because it goes against everything I stand for. <laughs> well, not so much. I feel like there's feminist opportunities within Love Island, but the initial premise of like girls standing there and boys getting to pick who they want, that doesn't really stand, that doesn't really adhere with my beliefs, but I fucking love this show. It is complete trash. You don't need to think much about it when you're watching it. You get really involved in people's lives and I love it. So for those who don't know, and why don't you know, there's this um, TV programme on um, ITV2 which is called Love Island where um, they have a, uh, a villa in Mallorca in Spain and they bring in um, a series of single boys and a series of single girls and gradually they pair off as the series goes on um, and they have challenges to complete, complete and things like that and then the, the two people at the end, it's a public vote, the, the couple at the end get to win, um, I think it's £100,000 between them. Um, and yeah, so um, I watched it last year and absolutely loved it and I'm enjoying it this year. I don't love it as much as last year, but that's because we're not as deep in. My favourite so far, I'm a very, very big fan of Danny. I really, really like Danny. I think she's lovely and I think her and Jack could go on and win it. Um, I also really like Laura and Wes. I've been very surprised by Laura and Wes. I feel like they, they just got together sort of like in like, not expecting much to happen but I think they're very very cute together I also obviously like Dr Alex he's very sweet I just think he needs to like switch it on a bit more just need to switch it on a bit more but 
the, the person I'm most in love with of all of it is Megan. Now, I don't think I've ever seen anyone as attractive in my life as yeah. how, um, how attractive Meg Megan is. She's absolutely beautiful. She's been a bit naughty at the moment, uh, a bit naughty, a lot naughty, because um, she's mucking around with ER and leading on Alex. For those that don't watch Love Island, you're not going to enjoy this chat at all, but that's how I feel at the moment. So that is something that I've been watching, which has mean that we haven't really watched any um, films because um, Love Island is on at 9 p.m. every single evening, <laughs> apart from Saturday, when there's a highlight show. So you can still watch it on Saturday if you want. Um, so yeah, so I haven't really been watching stuff, but we also have been watching Downton Abbey season two. David and I um, watched the whole, we watched the first three series of Downton Abbey um, when we first got together. It was like, I felt like it was the first summer we got together because I wasn't very well. And I remember saying to David, oh, please, can we just watch one episode of Downton Abbey? And he was like, no, no, no. And I said, please, I don't feel very well. And we put one episode on. And after that, David was like, put another episode on if you want. So he really liked it. So we've skipped straight to um, series two because we couldn't find the series one box set. Um, and we are really enjoying it. It's great. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people have watched it. Um, Dan Stevens, who plays Matthew, is both a firm favourite of ours. We really like the humour of it and the, the seriousness of it. And the acting's wonderful. We've really both adored Maggie Smith's character, um, the Dowager Countess, on, on a rewatch. We, we feel like we didn't appreciate her as much the first time around. And we're really, really enjoying it. We feel like this is our favourite series because after this series people that we love start dying um and at the moment no one that we love has died um so yeah we um we we're really really enjoying this and uh, we've been watching one episode of this a night so we've had like a really really chill lovely week um which is something that doesn't normally happen for david and i so david's been getting in i've had dinner ready uh we've watched an episode of D uh, downton abbey he does the clearing up i have a bath then we get ready for love island watch that go to bed at 10 lovely that's what we've been doing um so yeah they're the tv show shows that we've been watching at the moment uh the book that i'm reading at the moment i'm currently listening to the audiobook of the ruby and the smoke by philip pullman and um, this is a sally lockhart mystery it's the first in the sally lockhart um series i didn't realize these were written in the 80s i read them before when i was at university my um my friend Dolores, who i lived with at university um she loved these and uh, recommended them to me and i bought them in the oxfam bookshop in canterbury where i went to university which is an amazing secondhand bookshop if anyone's going to canterbury you will always find amazing finds in there they just have so much good stuff um and i bought it in there and i read it then i feel like i might have read the second one as well um but Philip Pullman is just such a master craftsman. There's a point in it, and I was listening to it, and I'm listening to the audiobook. I don't actually know who does the audio. Maybe Philip Pullman himself. Whoever it is is doing a great job of the um, of the, the voices and the characters. But there's a point in it, and, and um, there was just like a bit where he says, oh, and they all sat down to dinner and had a dinner of bread and cheese and a flagon of wine or something. And I think... Bloody hell, he always knows how to place those really well because something as simple as a meal of bread and cheese, I'm really thinking about it and imagining it with these characters all sat around. He just builds characters wonderfully. Um, you follow Sally, whose father has died, um, and there's a mystery that involves um, a, a, a ruby, a very expensive ruby, and there's a whole host of characters. A lot of it's set in Kent, where I live, um, including um, Chatham, um, which is where I work, and um, there's a place called Swale Ness, which I think is alluding to, um, I, I, it's not a, a, a real name of a place, but I think it's alluding to a place of where I grew up. So um, yeah, it's just really, really fun, and um, yeah, it's just lovely. If you haven't read these and you love His Dark Materials, I really would recommend them. They're great they're great great reads i really really love them so probably will uh, listen to the second one of these as well because i've just been enjoying it so much um, and then the actual book that i'm reading so i'm only i finished two books last night um so i'm only reading one book and listening to one book which never happens um and that is the great alone by christian hannah um i'm doing a buddy read of this with um lindsay from wandering reader and emma from emma's bookish lifestyle um i'm a little bit uh i'm 342 pages through i've got this much left this much left um and we're reading about 50 pages a day to the chapter. Um, but I have been really, really enjoying it up until something's just happened. And now I just feel like it's getting a bit, um, oh, it's so hard because there's literally nothing I can say without it being like a spoiler. But something quite tragic happens um, following something else quite tragic that's happened, which is following something else quite tragic that's happened. And it just feels like it's getting a bit 
indulgent in the tragedy if you know what I mean I really enjoyed the early bits it's about um, a family Cora and, and their daughter Leonora um, who um, decide to move to um, Alaska to um, live off the land and um, build their own homestead um, Ern is suffering from PTSD following the Vietnam War and um, I really really love the first bits of it it's amazing like the hearing how they survive and the the environment they're living in and the scenery and the oh, it just it's just <laughs> it's just described so beautifully and there's so many like strong female characters in here that help them get on their feet and the village is basically run by, um, by women when the men are away at work and it's amazing and I really really loved like the first half because of that um, and then it just got to a point where as I said something tragic happened followed by something tragic but, and it's just like a, a, um, a Russian doll <laughs> collection of horrific tragedies that are happening one after another and uh, I don't know if it's just me but it just feels like it's got a bit indulgent in its own tragedy like it's just sort of like oh like would all of these awful things happen to this same group of people uh, I don't know um but yeah I've still got about 100 pages to go probably a little bit less than 100 pages to go um I aim to have this finished tomorrow but yeah I was enjoying it up until a point I I don't know if it's gonna bring it back around I hope it is um the next thing is what have I been doing online now I haven't been doing much online because David and I our, our Wi-Fi hasn't been on or working um so any sort of um online um stuff has been reserved to me going to David's parents house or my parents house and using the Wi-Fi there but I have had some good sort of internet sessions of going somewhere I think you take for granted what it's like to have Wi-Fi so when I've been going to David's mum's house and like uh, mum and dad's house and uploading a video and using that hour sometimes it takes two hours to do other stuff I've been really Really, really productive um, so I'm about to go and do that in a minute I'm about to go and upload this video um, but I found that I've been really productive with the time that I've been given so I've gone started uploading it done my thumbnail answered a few emails answered some comments blah 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 and yeah I just feel like I've really um, I've been a lot more productive with my internet time um, and yeah it's been we're saying oh it's awful we haven't got wi-fi and it is because we can't watch anything on netflix we can't record anything um and we can't uh, watch anything on catch up and we can't just nip on the computer and look at something david's run out of data so it's it's, it's pretty it's pretty 1997 around our house at the moment but i feel like i've been more um careful with my internet usage and like turning my data off and putting my phone in the other room and just and just not going on stuff as much which has been nice it has been nice um so yeah in terms of online i've not been doing much but what i have been doing has been very productive um and then youtube um as i also i'm really behind with youtube at the moment um because i I haven't got wi-fi here so normally i watch it like when i'm getting ready in the morning or uh, when i'm cooking and things like that but because i haven't got wi-fi i haven't been able to do that um but the things that i definitely have been watching on youtube are um the love island first look clips so about one o'clock two o'clock every day um the love island um youtube uh, channel releases a first look clip of what's happening that evening um and quite often that's shared on facebook or on um twitter and i've, I've been watching that and um also because i've been watching those love they're basically the only videos i've been watching because i haven't had a chance to watch other stuff um love island australia clips have started being recommended to me so i've watched a few of those as well when i've had wi-fi um and i feel like i've been a bit invested in those guys as well i haven't watched one episode don't know what's going on um but i feel like i've been watching a little bit of their clips so if anyone is in australia and you watch love island australia is cassidy as nice as she seems because from the clips i've seen she's been really mucked around but i feel like she's met someone she likes now and um are grant and taylor as nasty as they seem um because they're just that's that's the vibe i've got from there um so yeah so that's what, that's what i've been doing just watching those what i will say though is that um the love island australia people they're also in spain I don't know if they're in Mallorca, but they're also in Spain. I think they're in Mallorca because I've got a fi they're in the first villa, which was used for the first two series. Um, and I've got a feeling, you heard it here first, and if you didn't, and if you work for Love Island production team, you should definitely make this happen. I've got a feeling that they're going to overlap those houses. You know, last year in Love Island, they took some people from um, the, the main villa and put them in a separate villa. I feel like they're maybe going to 
like cross over and get some people from the Love Island Australia to go into Love Island UK and the other way around. Do you think that could happen? Do you think that's going to happen? Um, yeah, if not, I mean, you can have that production idea for free, guys. Um, but yeah, so that is what I've been up to at the moment. What have you guys been up to at the moment? Would love to hear um, what favourite song you've got at the moment, what you've been watching on film and TV, what you've been reading, what you've been doing online, what you've been watching on YouTube. And I will see you all again soon for another victory video.